Other interesting cultural news, you have Louder the Crowder breaks a story the YMCA allows men to change in the women's locker rooms. Which, yeah, in terms of marketing, I think the YMCA is officially broken in terms of what they used to stand for. It used to be the Young Men's Christian Association, something to that effect. When were they founded? Let's pull that up really quick for the ADHD, or the folks with ADHD thoughts like myself. There might be a couple of you you're on the crowd. YMCA, let's see here. They're founded in... See, 1844. Jesus Louise by George Williams. Looks like okay, see. Yeah, it's known as the Young Men's Christian Association. So they're no longer men. They're no longer Christian, really. I mean, I can't help but think, what on earth do they still stand for these days? Well, apparently they stand for allowing anyone to use whatever restroom they want. So the story was originally broken by Laura Crowder, then retweeted. Uh, by lives of TikTok. Lives of TikTok on X Twitter said, quote, breaking YMCA sent an internal memo to staff defending their bathroom policies after a recent incident in one of their Southern California gyms. A teen girl witnessed a man enter the woman's locker room. She was frightened and complained to the YMCA staff, but nothing was done. In name of inclusivity, YMCA would rather cater to gender-confused men than protect women's spaces and keep young girls safe, unquote. And there's a screenshot that louder the crowd was able to provide to us and they say quote uh, let's see here i'll read the first part because it's quite long say quote it says child watch employees hey everyone i had a meeting with all of the admin staff this morning about safety and what's being done in san diego right now with ymca there on the topic of being transgender and we are all required to tell our staff about the incident as it did as it is a big issue going on right now. If you didn't know, this story was all over the nation's news right now, but basically at YMCA Southern California, there was a teenage girl in the locker room when a man appearing when a man appearing woman came into the change. The young woman looked frightened, complained to the front desk, but since it is part of the YMCA policy to be inclusive, they didn't find it to be an issue. And so that girl took it up to the city hall and is trying to get the law changed. We're expecting and have gotten already some questions and comments about the issue. So here is what you need to know about how to respond to people. One, the, YMC the YMCA is a place that stands for inclusivity. That means we want to use inclusive language and not have any vocal political or emotional feelings while you're at the Y. Inclusivity provides an open mind, helps prevent discrimination to anyone who might be a different in any way, and is a safe place for all. There is an inclusive bathroom here at our Y and changing stalls available in either bathroom and any negative instance towards a certain group of people needs to be reported. Again, everyone is welcome. All ages, all races, all genders, sexualities, religions, and other thank you. As the wise man once said, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And again, this is a huge cultural phenomenon in the United States and it's become the default for most major gyms now. I mean, We've, it's been a policy for many years. It's not going viral on social media. I mean, Planet Fitness lost $400 million in their stock valuation in a couple days when it was broke, and a news story broke where you had a man identifying as a woman in the girl's locker room, and a nice grandma came in and saw that, and there was a little girl there, and the grandma goes, what are you doing? And the guy goes, oh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm part of the community. And she took a picture of evidence. The guy, this man shaving in the woman's locker room went to the staff, and the staff actually canceled the membership of the nice grandma, which... Kind of shows their priorities. LA Fitness also has the same policy of letting anyone choose whatever bathrooms they want. And now it's shown that the YMCA likes that. And, and again, the YMCA used to do a lot more philanthropic things. They actually used to, you used to actually be able to live there in between if you're in a difficult situation. I understand their service and what they do have changed throughout the years. They, I mean, they've been around for over 100 years. But what do they really stand for these days? And it's certainly not what they used to be. Now, it went viral. It got 934,600 views in the first 24 hours when I wrote down the statistics for this. And it got 16,000 likes. And again, I can't help but think, uh, I suspect a majority of Americans don't want these types of bathroom situations. Now, in terms of the people who actually actively boycott, that's really what these companies are fearful of. 
because an overwhelming majority of the time when conservatives boycott things, nothing really happens. Not even a 1% decrease in their sales. The only successful boycott I've seen in 10 plus years from a conservative perspective was the Bud Light boycott, which again was the biggest boycott ever for conservatives. It's the biggest negative return on investment for business as well, I believe. Dylan Mulvaney, they literally paid Dylan $185,000 and they subsequently lost $1.4 billion in Bud Light sales. Like that's the worst marketing campaign I've ever heard of that didn't put a company directly out of business. Besides, it's even worse than the Osborne effect, which is a fascinating computer story. I'll explain it another time. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the comments would be ratio and lives of TikTok and say, "Oh yeah, maybe, you know, we we dis we disagree. We like this policy." And another ADHD note: fascinating how all the traditional media companies, no one broke this story. Fox News. I mean, they used to be the cliche. You know, they they used to stand for conservative news. After firing Tucker Carlson, it's just, to me, that was a final nail in the coffin of, what do you really stand for? Are you really just controlled opposition? Are you just a wolf of sheep's clothing? Again, I still recommend people check out every news network so you can understand different perspectives, kind of see what the opposition is thinking, what are their ideals and thoughts. And yet, the only co the company that's making the biggest breaks in these controversial cultural stories is Larry Crowder, which, again, they're growing exponentially, but... They're not on the scale of these media, big companies. Maybe that's why they're more effective. But they seem, seem to be one of the few companies that actually sticks to what they stand for, which I find fascinating where there's so many, unfortunately, two-faced turncoats and charlatans in our society. Now, going down to the comments, you have Paul Zuzupa saying, quote, well, it's a quote within a quote, so it'll be awkward for me to say, but I'll attempt it and nevertheless. So Paul Zuzupa is quoting the article, or rather the memo from the YMCA. Paul Zuzupa again says, quote, a man appearing to be a woman, unquote, now his quote, YMCA continues to cancel women by saying men can be women and that women aren't entitled to their privacy. YMCA is saying that a man with XY chromosomes and a penis can walk into a YMCA's women's locker room, get naked, and women need to to tolerate this, unquote. I got 1.2 thousand likes. And yes, that is exactly what the YMCA staff is telling people, which again, if you have children especially, I, I think that will be the, one of the biggest points of contention for a cultural perspective why so many people I think will perhaps actually actively boycott these types of institutions or these types of businesses. Now, that being said, how many options are there left? Truth be told, if I was a billionaire, I, if I had exponential amounts of resources to you know, start new businesses, it doesn't sound like a terrible idea to start a couple of you know, new gyms where that could be your differentiating factor. Say, hey, women, men, we're gonna make sure we have separate bathrooms for them, separate changing areas, we're gonna have this policy. You're gonna feel protected, you're gonna feel safe. You will be protected, you will feel safe. That may be a big value add from a consumer perspective, and I suspect many people would appreciate that messaging. Now that being said, it also would be a momentous amount of capital need to actually buy the machinery. I mean, commercial treadmills, seventy-eight to twelve thousand dollars. They're a pretty penny. Well, they're engineered to you know last quite some time. But I partially digress. Scrolling down, you have Mark saying, quote, the YMCA is no longer safe for women. At at this point, do we just concede and give them their own restroom. And then it has a picture of three stalls and it says problem solved and stall one is labeled men, stall two is labeled women, and stall three is labeled liberals with the, with the donkey logo, which again, when it comes to political logos, that is pretty pathetic for it to have a donkey or an elephant. And I'm surprised, why didn't one side pick the eagle or something more majestic or inspirational than a dumb donkey or a stubborn donkey or a, 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 just a, a mentally vacuous elephant? I, again, Politicians are terrible at marketing. You also have Red Wave Press saying, quote, teen girls should not have to share the bathroom with a grown man. Five years ago, we have called these men what they are, which is pedos. Now the media touts them as courageous and heroes, unquote. They got 1.6 thousand likes. Modern to Severe says, quote, when did inclusive become a catch-all word that excuses bad actors doing obviously wrong things like exposing themselves to children in the locker room, unquote. Getting 471 likes. Deep X says, quote, time to boycott YMCA. They clearly don't care about the safety of other of their female members. I'm getting 276 likes. Jason Storm Chaser Nelson seemed to have done a, a parody of the traditional YMCA song. I'll read the first couple of lyrics. So he says, women are not safe at the YMCA. Creeps in the bathroom at YMCA. They have everything from predators, predators own joy as girls who pretend they're boy. As girls who pretend they're boys, it's time to boycott your YMCA. It's time to boycott your YMCA. You can get your own stall. 
That's what they tell you at the YMCA. Let the pedos make the call, unquote. And that went pretty viral. Got 629 likes and 23,000 views. Merrick Garland press release parody says, quote, who else is fed up with this shit? Getting 305 likes. Let's see here. Anthony Hughes says, quote, how hard is it to understand men are women, women are men. Wait, stop that. Reverse. What he meant to say is men are women. Oh, he's just, he was doing a parody of it. So he's saying that's the illogical. Okay. Grammar aside, you know what he's trying to say. Old school Eddie says, quote, women's rights and safety seem to be ignored in this woke society we live in today. Getting 253 likes. Kaylee Triller says, quote, the Y fired me over these policies in 2015. Horrible betrayal of the members. Like, quote, getting 304 likes, which, again, it is fascinating. It's only now becoming more of a viral moment. Maybe it's just because it's election season, so there's more eyes on everything. And it will be interesting to see if this flows into, I'm not sure if you have a federal law. Because, again, these are pri all these are private businesses. Some of them are publicly traded. But I'm not sure what type of federal law you could pass or if it would be applicable to these businesses in this case. In government buildings, you could certainly pass a rule or law stipulation. Now, granted, a lot of people in government would push back on that. But it'll be interesting to see if, there, if it will not become a political topic because these are private sector businesses, maybe? Yeah, liberal media crat DM doing a sign of the LA Fitness plaque. Which, LA Fitness, you know it's a real deal in terms of company policy. When they spent money on a placard, I mean, this is just, they didn't just print this off in black and white paper. Oh, no, no, no. This is a legit high-quality plastic placard they affixed it to a, a wall or a door. And it is multicolored, folks. This is, I mean, it has the LA Fitness in two different colors. Which, again, traditionally when you're paying for marketing materials, every time you do a different color, it's another setup, another step for the machine to apply it. So that's, that's big money. And the LA Fitness says, quote, transgender individuals may use the locker room associated with their, with the gender, with, with the gender which, with which they identify, which grammatically I guess is correct, but it's, it seems awkward as hell to say with which, or maybe I just can't enunciate. Or, eh, maybe a little column A, a little column B. And on that note, now I'm kind of curious. Now, granted, this is about the YMCA, but famously now Planet Fitness is being boycotted. And kind of curious what is their stock doing like these days you also have most smith saying quote inclusive and understanding unless you're a woman or girl who feels unsafe and cooking 103 likes so pulling up let's see what planet fitness stock looks like yeah looks like it went up a little bit last week and the fact yeah last week the trend was actually increased actually went up by six around six percent in the past month it's gone up 0.93 percent Past six months, it's up 27.35%. Now, year to date, they're down at 14.36%. In the past year, they're down 17%. Five year, down 8%. And all time, the stock has actually increased by 243.18%. Although they don't even pay dividends. So, so if you buy the stock, it's not much incentive to keep it. Now, it looks like the current stock price again is $62.63 per share with a 52 week low of $44. So again, you did have that. There's a, cons a considerable dip in the stock. I'm trying to extrapolate this, and eh, it looks like because again, at one point last week it fell by about four hundred million dollars, but I mean it seems to bounce back pretty good, which kind of proves, kind of partially proves my point. What I was saying when the news first broke about these type of controversies and cultural phenomenons. Gyms make all their money in January, overwhelming majority of the year. That is where it all comes from because. Big part, New Year's resolutions. People try to get in shape, they sign up, and more often than not, they don't actually quit. They might stop going, but like most subscriptions, it's usually either difficult to actually cancel or people just don't have time for it, they just don't care. So it's very similar to gift cards. I mean, people get them, but the actual rate where they actually use them is nowhere near 100%, which is why it's a profitable thing for like gyms to have these subscriptions or gift cards for businesses to sell them. So it will be interesting to see, again, I don't think this is really hurting them financially yet. Again, we're talking about going back, kind of going back to Planet Fitness. Now, when it comes to the YMCA, I'm pretty sure, I want to say they're still a nonprofit. It is YMCA a nonprofit? Uh, looks like YMCA, yep, it is. They have a lot of volunteers. 919,000? 691 volunteers as of 2018, where that statistic took place. That is 
astronaut. Now, again, nonprofit just means they don't pay taxes. They still have to generate income, they have to generate revenue, so they actually pay the people who work there. They're not all volunteers. So, and again, from a competitive advantage, I haven't been to Lyme Station in quite some time, but last time I checked, they, the machines weren't as nice. They, it wasn't a premium gym experience. Now, granted, there are, there's a market for every, darn near everything in life. There is definitely a market for an aggressive price point gym. I kind of feel like that's how Planet Fitness, but I know LA Fitness, I think is much more premium, more expensive. But yeah, let me know. Do you know anyone who's actually canceled their membership yet? And do you think that's actually going to be, it'll really hurt them financially and fiscally speaking. They're getting a lot of negative press. I mean, if you just search these gyms, the first 90 to 12 things that are being written about them, reported on them, are about these very culturally polarizing instances. But, and I, I mean, we've seen screenshots, we've seen some people showing, hey, I canceled my membership. And that does add up in the aggregate, but how many of them are really canceling? And at the end of the day, will this be a cultural issue to divide people? Will it kind of just blow over and people won't care in a couple of years? I can't help but think, uh, as the youth might say, they are more based. And interestingly enough, the first time in generations where the youth is actually more conservative than the medium. So it might not blow over. There might be enough pushback where they actually change their policies. I'm pretty skeptical about that because, again, they made their money in January. People have a very short attention span or a short memory. Will people remember this in seven months? I mean, even if there's a couple of incidents, I can't help but think it's not going to be the top of their mind. But let me know. As always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Again, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment. It's a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.